Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro and right next to it Sogol SV01 Pro. Today we'll compare these two 3D printers in detail. If you ask me it'll be a tough comparison because although the printers are not very similar in appearance they both have many similar features and even some exact same components. As you can see from the simplest there's a CRTouch leveling probe here in the Ender 3 S1 Pro and look the same is in the Sobol SV01 Pro. Now let's look at their prices before we start. Ok let's turn on both printers. Look at CRTouch, they both opened and closed. Let's start with the printing volume of Sobol. SV01 Pro offers a print volume of 280mm on the X axis, 240mm on the Y and 300mm on the Z axis. On the other hand, Ender 3 S1 Pro is slightly smaller than Sobol and has a standard print volume that we see in most printers. Apparently, the Sobol offers a larger print volume and this is mainly due to the fact that as you can see the gantry is fixed to the base from the sides, not from the bottom, which creates extra space on the sides of the bed, but in S1 Pro the fixing is from the bottom. Also, for the same reason, Sobol's bed is rectangular, not square like S1 Pro. They both use a magnetic bed as the printing surface. As you can see S1 Pro has a spring steel PEI sheet. However, on Sobol, there is a very flexible surface that can be folded. Both printing beds are great at adhesion. However, as you can see on this flexible one, there might be some problems. This is usually caused by folding the surface hard when removing the print from the bed and which can sometimes cause the first layer of the print to be bad. But I can say that PEI sheet is perfect. My choice is definitely PEI sheet. But also because the surface is magnetic, you can easily use the PEI sheet, so it's not a big problem for Sobol. It's just one of the reasons why the price of Sobols is low. I'll talk about the lower parts of the printing bed, but there's almost nothing to compare here. They both have exactly the same spring and the same big knobs. The big difference here is that since SV01 Pro has a larger bed, it uses 6 wheels on the Y carriage, while Ender 3 has 4. Both can reach up to 110 degrees. And I must say that the cable insulation of the S1 Pro is better. When we look at the heating times, there is not a big difference. Sobol's bed is bigger, so heats up a little bit later, but it is almost the same. By the way, there is also a handle on the bed of the S1 Pro. Honestly, I don't use it that much, but it looks nice. So, Sobol has a bit larger printing area, but S1 Pro has a PEI sheet. Obviously, larger area is better, but it would be way better if there was a PEI sheet. Ok, let's move on to the print head. Both printers have a direct drive extruder, although it is not obvious from the outside. There is a big difference between them, which is that Ender 3 S1 Pro has an all metal dual gear extruder. On the other hand, Sol has a PTFE lined extruder. The all metal extruder in S1 Pro is really a significant feature because there is no PTFE tube in this hot end and so the extruder can reach 300 degrees without any problems. However, since there is a PTFE tube in the extruder of Sobol, reaching 300 degrees will not be good for PTFE tube at all. In short, because of the PTFE tube, this hot end cannot exceed 250 degrees like most other hot ends. Filaments such as PLA, ABS and TPU can be used in both printers but thanks to the all metal extruder in S1 Pro, materials that require high temperatures such as carbon fiber or nylon filament can also be used in S1 Pro. This is really a big advantage for S1 Pro because you can literally use a different material. Also S1 Pro has a dual gear extruder but Sol has an idle pulley extruder mechanism which is weaker than the dual gear. However, the thing is that I have not seen any difference in print quality between these two feeding mechanisms so far. The printhead of S1 Pro is a module. It is fixed with screws on the sides, you can remove it and then attach the laser module and the printer can be used as a laser engraver at the same time. And I even updated the firmware and so on. And you can see here in the interface, there is an option to switch the laser use. Also I did some research and I saw that the printhead of the Solo is also a module. It can be installed instead of the printhead just like in S1 Pro. Sowol doesn't have an all metal extruder, but almost all the components you see here are made of metal, which is nice they will last longer. It doesn't matter what I would say about their looks, 
because in the end they both the same job and they work just fine without any problems but my choice is S1 Pro's printhead. The best springs and knobs are the same on both printers as you can see and the other thing that is exactly the same is the CR touch. It is quite normal that the CR touch is in the S1 Pro. After all, the Creality brand, okay, but it's a bit surprising to see CR touch in solo. For the leveling, I first warm up both printers in PLA settings, then I do manual leveling from the corners with a paper and then I'll start automatic leveling. As you can see here on Sovo, we have a leveling values in the interface. There is nothing like that in S1 Pro. Even with just manual leveling, the corners look okay. It is good to see these values. Now, while the printers are working, let's look at the backs and the z-axis. Both printers use dual stepper models for the z-axis and the movement is provided by lead screws and brass nuts in both printers. In Ender 3 S1 Pro, small soft parts are added between the screws. I think these are for the reducing the backlash and smoother movement. But there's nothing like that in Sovol, it's not a big deal though. There's a big difference between the printers in appearance, but in practice I think it's not a very big deal. As you can see that in S1 Pro, the lead screws are connected to each other with a belt and so they work mechanically synchronized. However, there is no such belt in Sovo, that is, there is nothing that mechanically connects these shafts together. This may seem like a big problem on the surface, but I have been using both printers for a while and so far I have not seen any effect of the belt. Although Sovo is without a belt, it has been working very well so far without any problem. Problems. I don't know if the belt is really necessary. By the way, in both printers, these shafts are supported by bearings at the ends. So for example, if you want to add a belt to sew in the feature, this is not difficult at all. You can just get a belt and two pulleys and link them together easily. It seems Sewell tried to keep the price as low as possible. It is really hard to compare these two printers and one of the biggest reasons for this, both printers have a Creality motherboard. Yes, you didn't hear wrong. S1 Pro has a Creality brand 32-bit motherboard with silent drivers, which is quite normal, but Sol also has a Creality brand version 4.2.2 motherboard with silent drivers. This motherboard is the same motherboard used in Ender 3 V2, and I don't need to tell you how popular that series is. What's more, besides the motherboard, the power supplies are exactly the same. Both have a 24V 350 w Creality brand power supply. Looks like Soho used a lot of Creality's electronics, which I think is a smart move. Creality's hardware is usually good, but it's a bit sad not to see Soho's own hardware. Soho uses silent TMC2208 drivers. I don't know the model name for the Ender 3 S1 Pro, but they are also silent drivers. And noise levels of printers are almost the same. Now I want to talk about the screen and interfaces. Both printers have a 4.3 inch touchscreen and both are placed in the right front corner. I can say that their touch sensitivity is the same and I think Sovo's menu is the most colorful interface I have seen so far. I won't go into too much detail about the screen interfaces. You can find detailed information about both printers on the channel. As a result, what I want to say is, even though I don't like a very colorful interface like in Sovo, my choice is still Sovo's interface. Because for example, the most used things when using a printer are, you know, things like printing, heating or leveling. And look, Sovo has put all of these in one main menu and it's very easy to access them when you turn on the printer. But in S1 Pro, you have to go through several menus to do these things and some options are even in different menus. This may not seem difficult to you or you may think that you only need to press a couple things but if you are gonna use the printer all the time, you'll agree with me. Now I am printing two identical skulls and in the meantime, let's look at the appearance of the printers and other small details. The base of the S1 Pro is covered with a hard plastic but of course there are aluminum extrusions inside. On the other hand, Sol is completely metal. S1 Pro has a very deep drawer, a bed handle and this light. These are not on Sol. The light can be controlled with the switch here, which is nice but it would be better if there was an option to control it in RGB and in the interface. The X and Y axis belt tensioners, bed springs and knobs the mounting of the screens, these vertical extrusions, the spool holders and the filament sensors of the both printers are almost identical. So what do I think about the printers? 
If you ask me, Creality has definitely made a printer for both beginners and professionals with this S1 Pro. With features such as PEI sheet, CR touch, direct drive extruder, it allows to get a perfect printing as easy and smooth as possible. The all metal hot and dual gear direct drive extruder also appealed to professionals. And also with features such as drawer, light and handle, they have made the printer complete. And so you don't need extra custom 3D printed things that much. In my opinion Ender 3 S1 Pro is a complete 3D printer that made without caring that much about the price. It seems as if their aim is to make the perfect printer. On the other hand, when I look at Sowol SV01 Pro, I see a more affordable version of the S1 Pro because they both have a Creality brand motherboard, exactly the same power supply, the same CR touch, same spool holders, the same springs and knobs, same extrusions, belt tensioners, the printers are almost the same. I think the only big difference between them are Ender has an all metal hotend, a dual gear extruder, a Z axis with a belt and PEI sheet. On the other hand, Solol has a slightly larger print volume, so it actually depends a little bit on whether you are going to use an all metal extruder or not. Let's finally look at the prints. I don't think it's right to compare prints by the way, especially if the printers have the same brand motherboard, which doesn't make sense even if they don't have the same motherboard because I don't think there will be anything like bad print quality in these printers. I know that I have been printing for years without any problems even with cheap 3D printers that are about 6 or 7 years old. So if you say the print quality is bad, it's probably a calibration is not quite right. This is the same situation where both G-codes have the same printing speed like in here, both sliced at 50mm per second, but as you can see Sol has finished earlier. In this case, it would be wrong to say that Sol is a faster printer, because if you look at the settings of the printers right now, we'll probably see that the speed of the Sol is higher. What we need to look at in this case is the maximum speed or acceleration that the printers can handle, which I think is pretty much the same for both printers if you look at the appearance and the stability of the printers. I think the Sol SV01 Pro is a nice and more affordable alternative to the Ender 3 S1 Pro.